true political, which Dorian was talking about, is the impact of inspiring people to enter politics. Not just as an art form, but as a career choice. The Cardiff West MP, Kevin Brennan, is a perfect example of this. How old were you when you became aware of Victor Hara, uh, Allende, and the subsequent Pinochet coup? I actually remember watching the TV news um, in September 1973 when I was a 13-year-old growing up in Qumran. And the news came through of the coup against Allende in Chile. And it, it just really angered me. You know, they described it. I remember them describing it on the news as the first ever Marx, democratically elected Marxist government in the world. And the idea then that the army would come in, as we subsequently found out with, you know, CIA involvement from America and so on, and brutally overthrow this democratically elected government with a, a left wing leader um, was one of the big things that radicalized me as a teenager, teenager and really made me motivated about politics. So that's when I first heard about, uh, uh, you know, Allende and Chile, really. And it was subsequent to that when stories came through about what had happened to Victor Hara that I became more aware of him and his music. And as a kid growing up in Qumran, playing the guitar, 13 years old, hearing what happened to a folk singer being brutally murdered, uh, you know, in San Diego Stadium like that, it, in fact, I, wrote, I remember writing a song about it at the time, you know, it really, really angered me what had happened. And I think it was after that then that I got involved more actively in politics and I joined the Young Communist League, I, joined the anti-apartheid movement, uh, got involved with the anti-Nazi league and so on. And thereafter, when I was uh, 16, went into railing with my mate, Di George from Qumran, and we stayed with this family in Denmark who I'd met on, on holiday the year before, and they had Victor Hara records in their record collection. Because unlike now, you couldn't just access the music by going on the internet. It was you know, not immediately accessible. Uh, and um, that was the first time properly that I actually heard the music of this uh, figure I'd heard all about, uh, uh, you know, when the coup happened in Chile. I think I approached Victor Hara from a different direction to you. Um, I was kind of aware of Chilean politics uh, leading up to my teenage years, but I remember my mum talking about Pinochet being the perfect bedfellow for Margaret Thatcher because... You know, my mother was quite political and she didn't like either of those people, obviously. Um, so I was aware of his life, I was aware of the politics, I was aware of the landscape that was inherent in talking about Victor Hara and, and Chile. Um, but I didn't really become aware of his music, the breadth of his music catalogue until about three years ago. I knew a few songs, I knew Manifesto, which I was always impressed by, but I never came across Victor Hara albums when I was out shopping or anything. And, um, and it all feels so pre-internet when I first heard about Victor Hara. Um, but when I finally did get to hear a lot of his music, I couldn't believe how empathetic his music was, how inclusive it was. It really shocked me that a protest singer could actually be like this instead of being square on and confrontational. Is that your impression of him too when you first go into his music? Yeah, I think I think that's true. I think there's a it. They don't. Some do, but they don't sort of smash you over the head with a message. Always, there's a very subtle lyricism. I think to uh, the way that Victor Hara writes It's very poetic. Uh, in a way, it feels like a sort of you know South American, Latin American kind of poetic approach towards politics. And the, the song I remember from the first time I ever heard this record in Denmark, of all places, when I was was in derailing was a con song called Ni Chicha Ni Lemona, uh, you know, and, and it's basically a song about, you know, you're neither strong drink, you know, or sweet lemonade, you know, you're nothing, you know, because if you don't actually, if you sit on the fence all your life, you know, if you and, and you know, you have that attitude towards life, then you're nothing. And I just thought the imagery of that is a cracking tune as well, by the way, you know, it's a really brilliant sort of up-tempo tune, but I just thought that was such a clever use of imagery to get a political message across. Um, so I think that's right. There is a very subtle lyricism to, to Victor Hara's songs. Whilst I was recording this album, I did try to, you know, attempt to cover 
some of Victor's songs. Um, but his words just made my voice redundant. It just didn't work out. I, I couldn't do it. And I think that's the moral of the story. You know, you, you, you let somebody like Victor inspire you, but be at your peril if you try to follow in his footsteps for obvious reasons. But also, it, you, you can't live up to his bravery. You can't live up to his grace. You can't live up to his influence. But you can live, try and live up to his standards, can't you? I think that is a very astute observation because I think, you know, if I think of politicians that would have inspired me to get involved in politics, the obvious one, and it's absolutely true, would be Anirin Bevan, although he, you know, died as I was being born, but the, the legacy of it and looking back at his speeches. But if you try to emulate, you know, Anirin Bevan's speeches or his approach, you know, you, you, you're, you'd be dangerously, uh, get, you know, going towards parody. And I think with Victor Hara songs, I think one thing you said that is right is there is a kind of almost, you know, religious element to the to the, to the songs, a softness about them. Maybe that's something to do with the fact that, you know, he did for a time spend some time in the seminary. There is a strong link, you know, between liberation theology, you know, and Catholicism uh, <clears throat> and, and helping the poor and, you know, left wing political movements, particularly in South America. Uh, and I think that is that subtly woven into his music, which does make it difficult to reproduce and to cover. Uh, and that's why you're right that it's really a springboard, you know, for for inspiration to 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 to, to write your own material, um, you know, that's that's related to it. And I think that does equally translate into politics. You shouldn't try to just, you know, copy your political heroes. You've just got to use them as the inspiration. And the bottom line is, you know. Victor Hara is about help the weak against the strong. Nye Bevan was about help the weak against the strong. It almost boils down to something as simple as that and how do you convey that message, you know, in a, in a meaningful way to people. <laughs> 